Hello and welcome to New York. Welcome to the United Nations. Welcome to this France 24 interview. My guest today is Martin Griffith. He's the UN Special Envoy for Yemen. Welcome to the show, Mr. Griffith. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Obviously, uh, Yemen has been in the news, sadly, uh, in the news. Before we get uh, to your role in the negotiations, those very difficult negotiations, I want your assessment of the situation on the ground in Yemen, especially the humanitarian situation. You travel there. What are you seeing? It's not, uh, it's not a surprise, uh, given the, the clear evidence that this is the most severe humanitarian situation in the world. The number of the proportion of Yemenis who need, uh, or depending on UN and other agencies for their livelihoods, for their feeding, for their lives, the services which are under great distress in terms of health and education and so forth, it's it's an exceptionally awful situation. Uh, it's also of huge strategic importance, and and uh, this is why that it, it is a it is a conflict in which there are many international interests. But if you look at it purely from the perspective of a Yemeni family, there have been years of war now caused in, in, in ways that there is a, a lot of debate, but which is clear from the United Nations Security Council point of view as a result of uh, a battle which took place some years ago in which the Ansar Allah took, took power, um, that the Yemeni family has been as ever the victim of all this, of politics and preference. And it's getting worse. And it's getting, it's getting worse. And Mark Lowcock, the uh, Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs here in the UN about a week ago, just under a week ago, warned us all that there is a prospect of famine. Now, I have every hope that we can avoid that. But in order to do so, critical actions need to be taken now to prevent that happening. Let's uh, speak of those actions that need to be taken. Obviously, you're in charge of mediation. There was an attempt, a failed attempt, let's uh, speak honestly, mm -hmm. to convene uh, both camps in Geneva in early uh, September. Do you think it's still possible to bring both sides to the table and talk in a comprehensive way? Well, I certainly do. But more, more importantly than what I think, uh, I am, I'm privileged to be able to travel to meet both parties. I go to Sana'a uh, frequently. I will be there again in about a week's time. I go to Riyadh to meet the government of Yemen. I saw yesterday President Hadi uh, here in New York. Uh, and they all confirmed to me very clearly they want this to start as soon as possible. So don't listen to me. It, my opinion is of no value, but their opinion is critical. And they say they need this to happen, and they need this to happen for a simple reason. This war has gone on long enough. There is a political settlement which has been outlined in great detail in the negotiations that happened two years ago in Kuwait. It's available, as I keep saying, if the people want to pick it up and, uh, and use it. But clearly, uh, this was available uh, just a couple of weeks ago in Geneva, and it didn't happen. The Houthi delegation didn't come, uh, so uh, the Saudi-led coalition blamed them. They say we were not totally reassured about our security. Who's telling the truth, first of all? What happened? Why did it fail? Uh, it didn't fail. I think that's the first question. It didn't happen? Uh, no. I mean, what happened was we, we began the process of consultation with the government of Yemen. We didn't manage to get Ansar Allah there. That's absolutely true. The by, the way, by the way, uh, by the way, uh, reconvening talks after two years of fierce battle in any conflict in the world is not an easy, easy task. To ask people while their forces are battling on the ground for uh, success and victory in military terms, to ask them to also send people to talk peace is actually quite a big ask. Now, we had certainly planned to have them both together right. in Geneva. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that next time we will make sure this happens. We need to iron out some of the logistical and security issues that you have uh, referred to. And in my discussion since Geneva with both sides, I think we can do this. So essentially ensuring the Houthi side that they will travel safely to that place of mediation. Do you think you can achieve that, that they will come to the table if you can tell them, I guarantee you can travel safely? Yes. I mean, uh, again, don't, don't listen to me. Listen to Abdul Malik al Houthi, who said exactly that uh, to me last week. Uh, they you believe do... him? Well, I, I do believe him because he uh, tells me things which turn out uh, to be true. And in this case, we will make sure that we're absolutely clear 
what the uh, logistical arrangements, what the transport arrangements are, will make clear I will need to be persuaded that they're going to work, that there will be no last minute surprises from whatever quarter. Uh, and we will go through it before we finally decide that this is going to happen. But this has to happen soon. I mean, the momentum needs to pick up because, as you said, the humanitarian situation is worsening. We've seen military uh, strikes, especially around the port of Hodeida. I mean, it needs to happen within weeks, right? Well, I hope it will happen within weeks. Uh, that is exactly my intention. More importantly, it is the intention of the parties. More importantly, or as importantly as that, it's certainly the messages I've been getting, not just from President Hadi, but also from the coalition, who members, some of whom are here this week. The Emiratis, the Saudis. The Emiratis, the Saudis, their supporters in the but West. This, because this is not what they were saying recently. They are saying, essentially, we have to finish off the Houthis militarily, including in Hodeida. Did they change their tone? You ask them that question. I'm asking. I, 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 no, I will, your not, assessment, I will right? not answer for, for, for any of them. No, you will not draw me on that. But what I can tell you is that what they tell me is that they think this is right and proper. I have met uh, the uh, minister from uh, the United Arab Emirates just a couple of days ago, very clear on this, yesterday also in Saudi, but also most importantly from the government of Yemen. It's the government of Yemen that is the party. I, I, I listened to President Hadi uh, and he said essentially that those talks were quote unquote doomed to fail. So you tell me he's telling you he's all for it and publicly before the UN General Assembly, he says they're doomed to fail. That's a problem. We will see. We will see what happens. I am assured that they want to come to the table, the government of Yemen. I am assured that Ansarallah wants to come to the table also. Uh, it's my job to give them the opportunity to do that and give them the opportunity to start a discussion. I believe them. Let's find out if my view is right. Uh, you said that basically Maybe, that, maybe I'm extrapolating, but the framework agreement of a future solution has already been thoroughly negotiated. Uh, we've heard this about other conflicts, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's been going on for a long time. Is this really what you think, that the, the key is getting both sides across the table and that you think that can really agree on something that's already been negotiated largely? Uh, let me tell you exactly what I think. I think that the three months of work in Kuwait two years ago, provided a very detailed analysis of the elements of what could be a, a settlement of this conflict, a res political settlement of this conflict. Uh, it, it, it didn't transpire that they ultimately accepted, and it, otherwise we wouldn't have had the war for the last two years. But we did have, we do have the benefit of that examination of those negotiations. What was negotiated and discussed there provides a basis for a settlement. Now. Uh, it's my job, as I said, to bring the parties together so they can then negotiate it. I'm not in the position of predicting whether they will end up doing it or not. But clearly, uh, I believe that it's a viable settlement. I think the Security Council is united in wanting such a settlement. It fits in with Security Council resolutions. Uh, that's why I say it's available. I'm not going, I can't predict whether it will happen. We must all hope it happens as soon as possible. And my job is to try to make that happen as soon as possible. Right. I mean, do you fear a uh, secession of uh, Yemen, or do you think maybe a federal structure uh, could satisfy everyone? Uh, that's for Yemenis to decide. Uh, I think it's an extraordinarily important issue. Uh, my view, as I've said publicly frequently, is that I think the issue of the South, to which you're referring, uh, is something that needs to be resolved by Yemen in a state of peace. It, it, it can be and should be a key item on, on the agenda in a period of transition. Uh, I think at the moment any such rupture of, of Yemen would be enormously damaging to the economy and the structure and the stabilization of the peninsula. Right. Uh, would you say, it, uh, obviously you never know beforehand, but uh, this is the last chance uh, for peace in Yemen, the, f the next few weeks and if this fails, uh, the all-out war will be the future of Yemen. No, I don't think that. No, I don't think that. I don't think there ever is a last chance for peace, in fact. And I think uh, those who predict that are usually overcome by events, traduced by events. I think it's time. It's definitely time to stop it. Some, sometimes I'm accused of trying to make it all go too quickly towards a peace process. 
And as I said, I plead guilty to that charge because it's time. Because every day, as you were intimating at the beginning, that goes past is a day of humanitarian sadness for one more families in Yemen. So it's time to stop it. Whether this is the only time, whether this is the last time, I wouldn't like to say. I couldn't predict. Last question. Mm. Are you hoping that the international community that's been focused on uh, Syria or other places will finally focus its mind on resolving that crisis? That's also been missing. On Yemen? Yes. Well, you know, the Security Council is united on Yemen. We are blessed, uh, those of us who deal with uh, prospects for peace in Yemen, with the United Security Council. And I'm very uh, privileged to have that behind me. The Secretary General, who has a particular interest in resolving Yemen, uh, has that support. Uh, that's not always the case in Syria, as you know. So we have actually the united uh, views of the Council. They are focused on Yemen. In the, in the course of my few months doing this job, we must have had about a dozen meetings of the Security Council on Yemen, focused very much on Hodeidah, as you remember, in the past. So no, I think the Council is focused already. What we need to give the Council is a narrative about a process that leads us to a resolution. And they can then come in behind it and support it. Okay, Martin Griffith, thank you very much. And thank you for watching this edition of the interview from the United Nations here in New York.